Hi everybody, my name is Peter and today I'll be showing you how to animate MetaHuman with iClone tools. I'm gonna use Rococo Smart Suit and we'll see how to deal with motion capture data. So without further ado, let's just jump in and see what we made and how we made it. Hi everyone, today we explore a new iClone 8 and Unreal Engine 5. We're going to animate MetaHuman with incredible iClone tools. I go by the name Mr. Visual and I'm one of the winners from iClone Lip Sync Contest. Sitting there, right on your left, no matter where you are, or what you're doing, or who you're with, I will all... Are you ready? Let's hop in. Before we jump into motion capture, we should do some block out of our scene, or if possible, have already the final scene where we're going to place our animation. For this showcase, we made a really simple scene with few things in the background and our main props, which is chair, table and laptop. It's good to have some kind of a vision or plans for what are you going to capture and how the environment is going to interact with it. Prior to jumping in Nyclone, be sure to download and install all the necessary plugins. Reallusion provides you with the lively plugin and dummy models, which are basically retargeted matter human bodies. Just copy and paste dummies in your iClone content folder and copy and paste LiveLink folder in your plugin folder inside the Unreal project. Next thing on the list is to set up our MetaHuman blueprint so it can receive real-time animation data straight from iClone. There is a step-by-step -step tutorial on the Fisher Reallusion YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out. Once we're done, we're ready to animate. Once done with motion capture session, we made sure we make a few tries so we can pick our best one for the job. We'll use Rococo post-process effects on our data to get much cleaner export to iClone. I always use locomotion and drift fix just to be sure that weird noise in data is processed. Once we are done with the effects, we can export our animation as FBX and import it straight to the iClone. iClone also provides a Rococo profile, which allows you to stream data directly from your suit into the iClone. Do any work is to see and get us known with the iClone interface and the tools we use. On the left corner, there is Smart Content Manager. It's a really intuitive and streamlined library for managing all the various iClone 3D files, such as models, animations, and everything associated with our project. On the right side, there is a Modify panel. It contains parameters that belong to the selected object. It contains main and powerful animation tools that we'll use. Timeline is your main playing area where you can mix animations, set keyframes, filters, sample, and so on. iClone got a major timeline upgrades and my favorite one is the ability to have independent channels for every bone and every morph target. This comes really in handy when you want to polish your animations. The great thing that works with timeline is the curve editor. For the ones who are not familiar with the curves, it's basically just a different interface of keyframes and a much more intuitive way to inspect and edit your animations once you grasp the concept. So we are finally in the animation stage and we can start editing our animation. The thing about motion capture is it ends up always with some kind of jitterness or some kind of a noise that you want to fix up and we need to do clean up no matter what. To clean up some stuff I always use reach targets. 
Restargates allows you, instead of using uh, several motion layer keys to reach a character head or hands or feet or a target object, you may use a reach target to easily accomplish this animation. So what it does basically is, is when you set a target, iClone uses IK from your body to align animation. In the timeline, you can set a transition type and duration when the reach targets will be activated or released. In our project, we're going to use it when our character pulls a chair, lay down hands on a table or grabs the laptop. Next, we use Curve Editor to inspect some jitterness in movements and try to locate where is that happening. Using curves, you can easily spot the area that needs to be fixed. We delete selected keyframes, set tensions and smooth out a little bit. But be careful not to smooth too much. You may get really generic movement then. To edit animation, you can head to Modify Panel and use Edit Motion Layer. Window will pop up with the bone picker and you get to choose between FK and ICAN mode. Just click on the bone, select the mode and adjust the animation. It's that easy. At the end, we'll animate our fingers. iClone provides you with a great number of poses called gestures. You double click on them in the content manager and they will be applied to your body. You can use more gestures mix them and set transitions for smoother animation. Once you're done with gestures, you can sample them and then adjust them manually. Welcome to the facial animation. The part that I'm most excited about because I really love the tools. There are a number of different tools to animate our face. I like to start with the mouth first, so I'm going to use the one and only Aculips. Aculips feature for you to convert voice to readable text and align the text to the audio waves to ensure correctness for generating accurate voice me. I'll import my audio and Aculips will generate text for me. I'll tweak some words a little bit and then when the animation is applied, you can still edit and tweak individual white theme, their strength, smoothness or moods, all while being in the timeline. Once I'm finished with Aculips, I lay down a layer of live facial animation. For that, I'll head to the Motion Live plugin, connect my iPhone and capture the animation. Be sure to make a mask to exclude the mouth and the jaw since they are influenced by the Aculips. I also get some smoothness and record my animation. This will give me a great start for animating the rest of the face. For additional editing you can use Puppet System or Face Keys. Face Keys are manual keyframing with awesome picker interface. They can be used to emphasize some crucial facial expressions while using a puppet system is great for a neck in this case. Using a puppet you play the animation in real time and move your mouse cursor to increase or decrease the strength of the movement. It's a really powerful system that allows you to bring much more details of animation without a hassle adjusting keyframes and all of that. New stuff that's worth mentioning is the new illusion software called Autorigger. It lets you free and easily rig any of your character. So why is that cool? It's cool because Realusion except iClone for animation and Autorigger has a library of high quality animations called ActorCore, which you can purchase, import it in your iClone, put it on your character and then mix and edit animations in iClone. Icon is really becoming one-stop solution for animating characters. So, we did our animation and we are ready to get it to Unreal Engine. So there are a few options or pipelines we can use, like exporting FBX or using a live link, the one we're going to use it right now in our showcase. We're going to open Take Recorder in Unreal Engine, select our actor and press record 
In the meantime, we're just gonna play the sequence in the iClone and all of the data will be written down to our character. Once done, we're gonna save it and it will appear as animation. Also, Reillusion provided me with a new version of LiveLink, which has some major fixes. In the past, you can encounter some frame drop issues while using a LiveLink. However, with new icon Unreal LiveLink starting to support timecode, it makes sure that motion data is always sent out in a full frame. So for the end, there is one more thing left to do that is commonly overlooked, but it makes our body animation much more lifelike and real. And that is cloud physics. To make that happen, we have to export our blueprint with animations attached to the Blender. In Blender, we're gonna import our character and all of the other props so we have proper collision with them. Then we export from the Blender to Marvel's Designer as one Olympic file. We export simulation from Marvel's Designer and import it to Unreal Engine. We apply everything and voila, our scene and our animation is finished. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new and I can't wait to see what comes up next from Reillusion. So until the next time, peace out.